to encourage each other and to pray for each other. So just remember that as um, you consider that. Um, so with that, um, Friday was Veterans Day. So we want to honor all of our veterans. So if you're a veteran, please stand so we can honor you. He does. And we're just blessed beyond measure for that. So Amen. praise God for that. Uh, Pastor Mike's going to come, and we're going to do a prayer request. Uh, Sister Louise gave me one, so I'll give you one because he's coming. She would like us to pray for John Linsville. He's a 38-year-old gentleman that has stage 4 right <laughs> neck cancer. I mean, that's young. Yeah. But you know what? God is capable of touching this young man. He is. So yes, praise he God for that, Pastor Mike. All right. We're going to praise the Lord. Give him praise. Give him thanks today. We had one week to fall, and now we're right in winter. That's why I like to do. Don't have to fool around. It just goes right from season to season. We want to, want to remember uh, Phyllis's daughter in law in prayer, if you would. Renee, uh, she, she's got some things going on, so I told her we can certainly remember her in prayer coming up this week. So if you would, just keep Renee and, and Kitty for a second. Keep both of them in prayer, if you would. Uh, Glenda's mom has a colonoscopy coming up on Tuesday, so just keep Marie in prayers. It's sort of a diagnostic type thing to find out what's going on with, with uh, some pain she's having on the right side. So just continue to remember to read in your prayers. I told the church Wednesday night, I, I went over and visited with Linda and Billy, and Linda had to show me that she could walk around in the house. And I told her, I said, honey, I believe you when you tell me you could walk, but she wanted to show that she could walk. So praise God for that. He's, he's bringing Linda through. And she's getting, getting strength every day and doing doing better and better. So we want to continue to remember. Good to have Sister Marie back. Oh, it's good to be back. Back. There she is. Amen. She's back with us. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see Sister Wilma back. She's been out for some surgery. Glad that you're back too. So thank you. Appreciate all of you. So, amen. So you have a request that I've lifted your hand this morning. Needs. And maybe those you would like to speak of, we are on Facebook, but that's all right. Anybody you would like to, to remember in prayer today? Pastor Mark, yes. Remember Sister Judy Edwards. Sister yeah, Sister Judy, absolutely. And the on both sides. Yeah, continue to pray for her and lift her up in prayer. Miss Judy B. Okay. Someone else? dedicated last week, so we're trusting and believing she's going to be all right. She's going to be all right. You want to come down and stand in for it? Well, yes. Stand in for it. Yes, we'll get you up. Yeah, we'll get you across right there. We want to a couple of you ladies come on down and, and pray with us as we pray for seven. Somebody else is for it. Who's that? Sandy Dean, doing well. She's recovered and she's she's staying with Ron. And he's got the, he 
he's got some surgery he's going to have to be facing with his neck and back. And she said she may be here today if she, if she could, you know, leave him, but uh, she, she stays with him if he's having some issues. But she's doing well. She recovered as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. Somebody else? All right, let's all stand. If you would like, if you would like prayer, you just come on up and join with us. If you would like to come to the altar and pray, you can come on up to the altar and pray. It's entirely up to you. If you'd like to take a prayer call, what we're doing for Seth, perhaps you can get that and take for her. So we'll just go to God in prayer and then we'll remember all our, all our congregational needs here this morning. Go out into the highways and byways and buy a meeting.
Yeah. And we're getting ready to have a big meal next yeah. week. We're looking at serving right at a thousand meals. And uh, food's coming in, help's coming in. We need one thing to ask you for. First off, we're we'll asking you want to invite you in. Three o'clock till five o'clock next Saturday at Taking Two Streets. Come and get a free Thanksgiving meal. And all the people on Facebook, please get it out. That's 235 North Jefferson Avenue. You can ask it for Jeannie. And it got the, all the corn, beans, dressing, everything goes with Thanksgiving and dessert and a drink. And uh, what we need to do is I need to ask three people sometime during this week if they would cook a turkey for the Lord. And uh, he needs three turkeys cooked. We, we will cook 41 turkeys. And uh, so anyways, we got the guys involved in coming out and, and uh, helping deep fry turkeys and everything. But the big turkeys, like the 16, 17, 18 pounders, whatever, we can't cook those in the deep fry. So if anybody wants to cook a turkey and, and you cook it, cook it during the week and you'll get with me, and I'll pick it up like maybe like Thursday and put it in the freezer there at the ministry. And we'll have it, we'll serve uh Saturday, so it'll be fine. But thank you all. I want to thank you all for your support. Hey, God is good. I don't care what anybody tells you. God is good. Oh, my God. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our tithes and our offerings, but I forgot one uh, little part to the announcement. You know, this church Christmas dinner that we have, it's not just for the church. So if you feel led to invite anybody, yeah, if you absolutely. feel led to ask anybody in the community, you do that. Because that's what it's about. It's yeah. about. Because as Sean B. was speaking, Jesus said, if you do it unto the least of these, Amen, John. Yeah, that's right. he counts it as you've done it to him. Amen, so brother. praise God for that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Let's go to God one more time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, yes, it's a little cool, and you know, but it's still a beautiful day out there. So, Lord, we ask your blessing over this offering. Take it, multiply it as only you can. It's all yours to begin with. Yes, Lord. But you're teaching us how to get back to your kingdom. Thank you. Because Lord. you are the great God, the great Jehovah. And like Charlie B said, you're good all the time. Amen. So we, praise you. we give you the glory. We give you the honor for everything that your son has done in our place. And we praise him too. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of us say, Amen. 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 joy in that word joy in my bible is in bold letters i will joy 
not in the world, but in the God of my salvation. Yes. The Lord yes. God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, or yeah. hind's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. We can rejoice in the Lord no matter how bleak our life might look today. No matter what trial we're going through, we can sing a song of praise to yeah. the Lord. If you want yeah. victory this morning, as we sing these songs that the choir has picked out, sing it to him That's with right. your whole heart and see what he does for you. You'll walk right. out of here this morning with a spring in your step, and you walk yeah. out of here with That's a promise right. in your heart that Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. is Lord. Yeah. God is Lord. Yeah.
serve. Man, you all pick the right songs. God is good. All the time. I have never found a time he wasn't faithful. Never. There's been many times I wasn't faithful. But I've never found a time he wasn't faithful. He's always, he's always right there. Well, I'll just worship for a minute. That's okay. That's all right. Wouldn't take nothing for that. Wouldn't take nothing Amen. for that. I know the just shall live by faith, but it's good when the just get a feeling once in a while. I tell you, it's well, it's well worth it. Well worth it. Well, we're going to, we're going to observe communion this morning. Uh, we're, we're we're doing the service thing. We've got through there. Pandemic for the most part, and I know all this stuff is still out here, but you know what? God is still on the throne. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we're we're obligated, we're obligated to worship Him and praise Him. And I can't think of a better way to do that than through communion. When I was in the Gideons and I would go to different churches, there were several denominations who do communion every Sunday. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you just don't want it to become a ritual. You, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying they do. But you just want to guard against that. I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Hebrews in the 10th chapter. The writer to Hebrews is only known by God. For years, scholars thought that the Apostle Paul wrote the book. And then they determined maybe it wasn't him. But maybe it was somebody in this circle. The one of his friends or somebody, some have even said it was Barnabas. But you know, when he comes right down to it, it doesn't matter who it was that actually put the words down. Because we know the Holy Spirit is the one that inspired it. So he's the one that, that speaks to us through this book. And when it was written, it was written for the Jews primarily because for hundreds and hundreds of years, they had put their trust in the sacrifices of the blood of the bulls and the goats and the lambs and the high priest would go in once a year and make atonement for their sins so if they had sinned throughout the year it wasn't until that day of atonement that god would have told them now they could bring a sacrifice offering every day to the temple to the high priest but only one time a year could they actually go into what they call the holiest of holies. He was the only one that was allowed to go back there. So when the writer penned this book to the Jews from Hebrews, he was making a case that there was a time that that's what God had ordained for his people to do to have communion with him. But when he sent Christ to die on the cross and he became the sacrificial lamb, all that changed. It didn't change the holiness of the sacrifice, but what it did is it opened the door so that it's not just one man that goes behind the curtain anymore, but it's every person that wants to commune with God can do so because of what Christ did. So that's what this book pretty much tells us. We're going to look at one section, one, one part of it here, starting at verse 19 through verse 23. But keep that in mind as you listen to the words in this book. And the writer says, Therefore, brethren, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest of holies, the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Say that with me. By a new and living way which he, capital A-G, Jesus, which he consecrated for us through the veil, and that veil was his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith. How many needs the assurance of faith this morning? Amen. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and their bodies washed with pure water, which is the word. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he 
who promised is faithful. If somebody makes you a promise, there's two things you have to be aware of. Number one, he's going to keep it. And number two, is he able to keep it? Jesus is able to keep it. Father, we thank you today for those who are together. We thank you for this worship service. We thank you that we've had this time together already to, to focus on you. Father, I love this communion service, and I believe that from the time we come into the sanctuary until the time that we partake of the elements, I believe it's all part of communion with you. So I thank you for giving us this, this feast of sacrifice today that we're able to, to draw closer unto you through this symbolic gesture that we will perform here directly. And we'll give you the thanks and praise for all of us, Jesus, as you guide and direct us in your way. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Holy Communion is much more than just a ritual. It is grounded in the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. It, it, it's more than just the taking of the bread and the taking of the cup. It's, it goes deeper than that. When Jesus gave it to the first disciples as a symbolic gesture of what he was getting ready to do on the cross, they had no idea. They, he had told them three times prior to that that he would be going to Jerusalem, he would be turned over to the authorities, he would be beaten, he would be scourged, and he would be crucified. But on the third day, he would rise again. And John tells us in his gospel, they didn't fully understand that, Charles, at the time. But once he was resurrected, once he came back to life, they realized that everything he had told them before, they could count on it happening later. Because before the cross, the promises that were made were kept by him going to the cross. And now those promises will be kept because he came out of that tomb and because he is alive. So when he gave them that last supper and he went through that breaking of the bread and the taking of the cup, it had to do with reminding them that they might remind us so that as it passed down through the centuries that what Christ had did for us would never be forgotten, but it would always be remembered, but it would not be just remembered in the sense that it was history, but it would be remembered in the sense that every living, breathing moment, every breath that we take, that Jesus is just one breath and one heartbeat away from being with us forever. Amen. He was there with them at that table, they, they left him at the cross and John stayed there. But once he was resurrected, he gathered them back together again. And he showed them his hands and he showed them his side. And he told them, I am alive forevermore. And then when he led them outside Jerusalem to the Mount of Olives and he ascended and he had told them through the angels that this same Jesus will so come just as you have seen him go. He kept the promise of the cross. He kept the promise of the resurrection. And he's going to keep the promise of his return. Amen. And that's what this communion service causes us to be aware of. It, it not only reminds us of what Jesus has done, but it, it reminds us of what he is going to do. And because of these promises that we have, we can, we can partake in this communion together as those who are born again in Christ, knowing that he's going to keep it. In Matthew chapter 26, and I'm going to turn over there and read that. That's the account at the Last Supper when Jesus was with his disciples and gave them or presented to them this gesture in which they would be able to remember. At the 26th verse in the 26th chapter, Matthew wrote, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed and broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. Matthew could have said, he gave it to us. And he said, Take and eat, for this is my body. 
And then after they had ate the bread, he took the cup and he gave thanks for it as well. And then he gave the cup to us. He gave it to them. And he said, drink from it, all of you. And he passed the cup around the table. And then he said, for this is my blood, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for me for the remission of sins. Now listen carefully. But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. When I drink it new with you Amen. in my Father's kingdom. Jesus is planning on having communion again with his disciples. He's planning on doing that. If he's planning on doing that, shouldn't we be planning on doing that? Yeah. If, if he's planning on communing with me, shouldn't I be planning on communing with him? Yeah. Why, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not just a thought. It's not just, well, it's going to happen. It's the very fact that it will happen. Luke recorded in his gospel Matthew, Mark, and Luke all recorded these words at the table that night. Luke added these words that Jesus said in his gospel. Jesus said in Luke 22, 19, Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And it's not necessarily in remembrance that Jesus was just a prophet or that he was a good man. But it was in remembrance of him going to the cross. It was in remembrance of him shedding his blood. It was in remembrance of him being resurrected. It was in remembrance of him being ascended. It was in remembrance of him saying, the next time I take communion, it will be with you in my Father's kingdom church. We're closer to that day now than we've ever been. We're closer to communion with Christ in reality than we have ever been in world history. I don't know the hour. I don't know the day, but he does. But he is prepared for it. He's already got the elements laid out. Before you came in this church, I came over yesterday and prepared the elements for you to take communion. So when you take communion, it wasn't a last minute thing. I had planned on it. I had put it together for us to do it. Jesus has done the same thing. He went back. He has planned on it. He has put it together. He is just waiting for that day that the Father says, go get them. And when that happens, then he will commune with us in the Father's kingdom. Every time we break the bread and drink of the cup, we're saying to him, I believe everything that you have said. And I believe everything that you have done. And that is faith. I'm going to ask those guys that I ask you to serve, if you will come up at this time and we'll serve here in just a moment. In 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul, he, he kind of, I guess if you would say, he rebuked that church to a certain extent in the way that they were handling what he called the Lord's Supper. And this Lord's Supper that he was talking about was the Holy Communion with Christ. And he had he had told them that they had somehow got away from what it truly meant. That they had made it into a party, perhaps. It was an actual supper that they would come together. And his whole push was, you're, you're doing this as an ordinance because it's what God has commanded or Jesus has commanded us to do. But on the other hand, it means nothing to you. It means nothing to you. See, this communion thing 
that we're getting ready to partake in, if to you it's just something that you do, if to you it's just a ritual, then honey, you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point. Then I, I know, I know that this this grape juice, in fact, came from a store, and I realize that these wafers came from a store. I realize that. I understand that Christ didn't personally give me the juice, and he didn't personally give me the bread, but he gave me the promise. Yeah. And yeah. the promise he gave me was, every time you do this, yeah. you will remember not only what I have done, but what I am going to do. Amen. Amen. And that's where we are here this morning. So everyone is invited to partake in communion. But now the Apostle Paul warned the Corinthian church because a lot of them were taking communion and they weren't born again. They weren't saved. Christ wasn't in their heart. Let me say this as plain as I know how to say it. If you're not born again, communion will do you no good. Amen. Amen. If you're not born again, communion is nothing more than that as a little boy told the one little boy when they were in church and they were getting ready to have communion and one little boy told the other one, he said, we're going to be here a while. They're getting ready to serve lunch. <laughs> well, it's, it's about the same thing if you're not born again. It just as well as to be looked at as a snack because this will not save you. Amen. What this does is it honors your confession that you are saved. Amen. When you take communion, you're confessing your faith to your Lord that you're looking for that day Amen. in which he is going to come and receive you Amen. that we all might have communion Amen. with him together in heaven. That's what we're <coughs> ready to do. That's what this is about. Father, we thank you today. We come here today and glorify you in your house. Lord, we cannot, we cannot in any way express in words how solemn a moment it is to be able to share in this breaking of bread. Father, this historical gesture goes all the way back to that very night that you were at the table with those first disciples, knowing then that there would be disciples today at Draper Mountain who would be remembering you in the same way. So, Father, as we partake of this communion, and we partake of these elements, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you move upon each and every heart, start with mine, in this place, that for the next few minutes, we may not focus on where we're going or where we've been, but that we will focus on your return. And you will come, and you will receive us to be with you, so that where you are, there we may be. In your name, Jesus, we ask it by faith. Thank you, Lord.
stand and please. The apostle left us with these words as being inspired by the Holy Spirit as well. People forget sometimes that the apostle Paul, when he was in the wilderness, spent three years with Jesus, just like the other disciples did. Amen. He tells us that. So he tells the Corinthian church, he said, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and then he said, Take and eat this, for this is my body, which is broken for you. And as Luke recorded, he said, Do this in remembrance of me. So if you will take the bread and partake of it, we remember the body of Christ Amen. that was crucified for us. Amen. And, and the apostle said in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. And according to the Jewish tradition, this is what they call the cup of blessing, which was the final cup that they would always end the Last Supper and the Passover with. And Jesus took this cup after supper, which was the cup of blessing, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, there were two covenants of blood. The first was the blood of bulls and goats. But this is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. So this do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So would you drink of the cup and remember the blood Amen. that was shed for us on the cross? Amen. And as Christ had said, the apostle says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Until he comes. Amen. And we just give him praise. Amen. Father, we're looking to that day. We're looking to that return that you come to your church. This morning we've partaken of this communion as a confession and a profession of our faith. And Father, this may be the last communion we take on this earth. The next time we take communion, we may be with you in that kingdom. So Father, in doing it today, we proclaim our faith in you as our Lord our Savior and our soon coming King. In your name, Jesus, we pray. And the saints would say, We love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Amen. Love you. amen. And amen. God bless you. Take your time. Fellowship with one another. Bible study will be Wednesday night. Church board, if you will meet in my office just for a few minutes. God bless you guys. And you have a great day in the morning.